November 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ezekiel chapter 39 from the Old Testament. As for you, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Look, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around and drag you along. I will lead you up from the remotest parts of the north and bring you against the mountains of Israel. I will knock your bow out of your left hand and make your arrows fall from your right hand. You will fall dead on the mountains of Israel, you and all your troops and the people who are with you. I give you as food to every kind of bird and every wild beast. You will fall dead in the open field, for I have spoken, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will send fire on Magog and all those who live securely in the coastlands. Then they will know that I am the Lord. I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. I will not let my holy name be profaned any more. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Realize that it is coming and it will be done, declares the Sovereign Lord. It is the day I have spoken about. Then those who live in the cities of Israel will go out and use the weapons for kindling, the shields, bows, and arrows, war clubs, and spears. They will burn them for seven years. They will not need to take wood from the field or cut down trees from the forest because they will make fires with the weapons. They will take the loot from those who looted them and seize the plunder of those who plundered them, declares the Sovereign Lord. On that day I will assign Gog a grave in Israel. It will be the valley of those who travel east of the sea. It will block the way of the travelers. There they will bury Gog and all his horde. They will call it the valley of Haman Gog. For seven months Israel will bury them in order to cleanse the land. All of the people of the land will bury them and it will be a memorial for them. On the day I magnify myself declares the Sovereign Lord. They will designate men to scout continually through the land, burying those who remain on the surface of the ground in order to cleanse it. They will search for seven full months. When the scouts survey the land and see a human bone, they will place a sign by it until those assigned to burial duty have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. A city by the name of Hamona will also be there. They will cleanse the land. As for you, son of man, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Tell every kind of bird and every wild beast, assemble and come. Gather from all around to my slaughter, which I am going to make for you. A great slaughter on the mountains of Israel. You will eat flesh and drink blood. You will eat the flesh of warriors and drink the blood of the princes of the earth. The rams, lambs, goats, and bulls, all of them fattened, animals of Bashan. You will eat fat until you are full and drink blood until you are drunk at my slaughter, which I have made for you. You will fill up at my table with horses and charioteers, with warriors and all the soldiers, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will display my majesty among the nations. All the nations will witness the judgment I have executed and the power I have exhibited among them. Then the house of Israel will know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward. The nations will know that the house of Israel went into exile due to their iniquity, for they were unfaithful to me. So I hid my face from them and handed them over to their enemies. All of them died by the sword. According to their uncleanness and rebellion, I have dealt with them, and I hid my face from them. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Now I will restore the fortunes of Jacob, and I will have mercy on the entire house of Israel. I will be zealous for my holy name. They will bear their shame for all their unfaithful acts against me when they live securely on their land with no one to make them afraid. When I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them from the countries of their enemies, I will magnify myself among them in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God, because I sent them into exile among the nations, and then gathered them into their own land. I will not leave any of them in exile any longer. 
I will no longer hide my face from them when I pour out my spirit on the house of Israel, declares the Sovereign Lord. God, we need to remember how big you are. We may not grasp the concept of big as far as you are concerned or what your sovereignty really means. But just like Israel, all we have to do is look around us and we start to understand what big is. It is it is hard that you had to have Ezekiel prophesy about this battle that's going to happen where the sheer amount of people killed created this gruesome banquet for all of the um, vulture type scavengers out there that it all of the uh, weapons would produce kindling for seven years and it took seven months to clear the clear the battle of bodies okay that's kind of big and israel needs to understand that you had the power all along to save them. You didn't have to kill them off where they were and send the rest into exile. But they were being so disobedient, so going against everything you asked them to do, that you had to show them who the Sovereign Lord was. And you did that by destroying a nation that was so against you They worshipped idols, and I'm not talking about just this specific example, but all the nations that Ezekiel prophesied against, all of them needing to be brought down in front of Israel to show Israel that you are sovereign, that you were that big. In fact, it's interesting, we actually see some of this uh, carnage, banquet, wording, and imagery. We actually see a lot of that in Revelation. Uh, John's end of times uh, book when your son comes back and every knee is going to bow and know that you are Lord Uh, crazy awesome and I'm very excited for that day to happen in the meantime I think we need to know how to apply these situations to our lives to understanding like Israel completely missed the point of how big you are, how sovereign you are, and what you expect of us. And how in the world could we not, with all that you've given us, be obedient to that? Well, I for one know that I'm not obedient to that. And I know exactly why, because suddenly my agenda for my life becomes selfishly more important than everything you've done for me. That incredible sacrificial love that we don't quite understand as humans. But just because we don't understand it doesn't give us a right to be disobedient, didn't give Israel a right. And you actually turned your back on them. And then you showed them clearly their exile was a discipline, that they were being punished for what they did, that you had every ability to save them to save their families from being destroyed and to save them from going into exile. But you didn't. So God, allow us today, allow us to just look around our world. We don't even need to go very far to understand how big you are. We can, we can acknowledge that by understanding that the sun rises in the morning, that the stars come out at night. That if you look at a single tiny flower and how perfect that entire system is of feeding it. Or ourselves, how amazing our bodies are and how they function. And what an intricate machinery our bodies are that you created. Perhaps today we are reflective of the things you've done in our life. And God, you've done some big things in my life. Allow those to settle into my heart and allow me to use those things to always remember how big you are and how obedient I should be, how humble I should be. John 3.30 is my favorite Bible verse of all of them in the Bible, that you must become greater and I must become less. And once I get that, Pretty much everything else falls into place. Once you're more and I'm less, 
I love my neighbor like you love me. Once you are greater and I am less, I obediently and humbly do your will in my life. Once you are greater and I am less, things in this world that I make all about me and the agenda I want in my life don't matter anymore. All that matters is this incredibly huge, gigantic God that I serve. God, I want you to not just be greater in my life, but I want you to be bigger than I can even imagine. And I want to intentionally carry around that imagery of how big you are with me always. I want all situations, all emotions, all feelings, all actions to come out of that knowledge of how sovereign you truly are and how little I deserve anything that you've given me but out of the sacrificial love you have. God, as me, I am not worthy of anything. As your child being obedient, I am humbled that you allow me to walk the path you've created for me. And God, as I am humbled as your child, I am truly honored that you've allowed me to be a disciple of yours, to go out and tell other people about you, especially considering my own life that is filled with destruction and evilness and sin. That somehow somebody like me you feel is worthy enough to share the most valuable message we have in this entire world, the message of you, your sacrificial love, your forgiveness, your grace and your mercy, and most of all, your sovereignty. Thank you, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.